The forgotten organ that makes you feel energized is spleen. Everyone's focused on liver. Liver king this, liver king that. What about spleen king? Can I be spleen king? Okay, the reality is when it comes down to energy, when it comes down to iron, when it comes down to nutritional bang for the buck, liver is epic. I absolutely agree. I think it is the top of the food chain, but spleen has unique benefits and I'm gonna break them down because I like nuance and I like science even all the way down to some emerging stuff with peptides that are in spleen. So let's talk about it for a minute. So first off, spleen ridiculously high in protein, zero grams of carbs, and in 450 grams of it, you're gonna get 80 grams of protein, you're gonna get 1500% of your iron, you're gonna get 260% of your vitamin C, you're gonna get over 650% of your vitamin B12. Okay, the list goes on and on. Plus the copper value of it is phenomenal, which I'll talk about. Let's talk about the basics of it, why this is so important. Okay, liver is great when it comes down to iron. It has a high amount of heme iron, but not nearly as much as spleen has. Spleen is probably the highest concentration of heme iron that you can find in any real food. Now, when you look at the Western diet, most of the iron that we are getting in through our diet is in what is called a non-heme form. 85, 90% of our iron comes from grains, comes from vegetables. A non-heme form is estimated that we only absorb about two to 20% of it. So even if we're eating adequate amounts of iron, the likelihood of us actually seeing that result in our serum iron levels is pretty low. Whereas we consume iron in a heme form and we absorb about 40% of it on average. Now, the thing that is interesting about spleen is it has copper in it as well. And it just so happens to have a really nice ratio of iron to copper. Now, I'm gonna to touch on something for a second that's a little more complex, but I'll make it simple. A lot of us think that we are anemic, okay, because our iron levels are low. Well, just because our iron levels aren't present in the blood doesn't mean that we don't have stored levels of iron. And we have to convert iron from its ferrous state to its ferric state. Okay, so to be able to actually use iron properly, we need copper. So copper kind of sits behind the wheel and drives what iron is activated, how iron carries oxygen, how this whole process works, okay? So iron and copper are critical together. And it just so happens that spleen has a really nice ratio of that. How does that manifest into how you feel? That is how you feel energized, okay? Iron is going to help out the whole hemoglobin equation, right? Being able to carry oxygen, being able to actually deliver oxygen to a cell so that you can go through oxidative phosphorylation so that you can create energy. So as we get older, we start feeling like we're depleted of energy. This could be one of the easiest low hanging organs to really pick from. Another interesting thing that comes when you consume heme iron, whether it's from spleen, which is essentially just a meat source really, or even muscle meat, is you actually increase the ability to absorb non-heme iron too. That means the vegetables that you eat along with meat or along with spleen, you can extract the iron from them better when those things are combined. So having a little bit of spleen or having a little bit of meat, whatever, and you can get spleen in supplement form too. You don't have to just literally eat spleen. It's what I do. I don't just always eat spleen. I have eaten spleen, but typically I supplement it. Now on the B vitamin side, we're also talking about energy, but one piece that's neglected, especially when you're talking about just a grandiose B vitamin like discussion over the long term. When you look at the data, those that have a higher intake of vitamin B end up having better cognitive function over the course of 25 years. So we're not just looking immediate brain benefit, we're looking longer term as well. And interestingly enough, if you look at a lot of research and you look at a lot of like organs that people eat, combining spleen and heart is a pretty common one. I'm not suggesting everyone goes and gets a bunch of heart and gets a bunch of spleen. I know that's cumbersome, but heart has a lot of selenium in it, like a ton of selenium. And one of the interesting bodies of research is suggesting that when subjects consume fair amounts of selenium, it dramatically reduces C-reactive protein and some of the inflammatory cytokines. You combine this with better oxygenation, higher iron content, and you have a recipe for not only better potential immune response, but probably just more energy. So when it comes to liver, I like to eat my liver. I do take liver supplements from time to time, but I just eat a couple ounces of liver every couple of weeks. You don't need that that much, and it's pretty easy to get. Spleen is a little bit more complicated. I put a link down below for MK Supplements. A guy named Michael had started that company. I know him quite well from some other stuff, and that link is gonna take you to his heart and spleen supplement. 
which has 1,500 milligrams of spleen and 1,500 milligrams of heart in a desiccated, grass-fed, grass-finished New Zealand cattle form. So super, super good quality stuff. Cool thing is it's freeze-dried, so everything is essentially as fresh as you can get in a capsule form and it's all been independently lab tested. So you know you're not getting anything weird. It's as close to a whole food as you can possibly get. I started taking a spleen supplement and my energy went through the roof. Now, for the record, I live at high altitude a lot of the time, between six and 7,000 feet, right? So there, having more oxygen, having more iron, having higher red blood cell count, being able to support that becomes really important. I noticed a tremendous effect in my ability to acclimate and ability to perform at higher aerobic capacity. That's my own anecdotal experience, which goes to explain a lot of the things that I've been talking about from a research standpoint. So anyway, that link is down below. You can use that code and use that link for a special discount. Definitely recommend you try it. He also has liver capsules too. So if you don't like to eat liver and you want to do that in capsule form, you can get the heart and spleen capsules and the liver capsules. In the world of supplements, I don't really consider these supplements. I consider it food because it's literal desiccated grass-fed, grass-finished spleen and heart. It's literal food just put in a freeze-dried form. So for all intents and purposes, even though it's technically a supplement, I consider it more food. So check them out down below in the description with that link. Now I wanna get into the cool stuff because this is what's really separating spleen from other organs. There's preliminary research on the peptides in spleen. And this is what's getting exciting. And I have to be careful with how I talk about this because I can't say that, hey, you're gonna take this supplement or hey, you're gonna eat spleen and this is magically gonna happen. But I can talk about the research, this flabbergasting stuff. There's a peptide called Tufstin, okay? And Tufstin has been demonstrated at least in vitro and in some early other models to affect immunomodulation, specifically with what are called dendritic cells. So if you're familiar with the immune system at all, the goal is to sort of increase dendritic cell capture of antigens. And what that means is the dendritic cells go around and they capture antigens and they essentially get smarter. And when these dendritic cells can capture more, let's just say bad things in your body, they can then program the T cells to be smarter, therefore having potential effects against pathogens, potential effects against tumors. So what this essentially means is you can maybe make your immune system get smarter. And that's what immunomodulatory means. It means you're modulating the immune system and allowing it to kind of do its job better. Really interesting. Another thing with this Tufstin is they're starting to see that it can increase the number of T cells. So T cells go around and they identify things in the body, identify pathogens. They're like reconnaissance troops, right? So if you have more reconnaissance, you have a better chance of catching something before it goes crazy. Now, there is another peptide called splenopectin. Now, splenopectin is a synthetic peptide. So splenopectin doesn't literally exist in spleen, but splenopectin is derived from something called splenin, which is in spleen, that's a part of spleen. The immunomodulatory effect of splenin or splenopectin in this case is very interesting and it's a little bit further along. There's rodent model research in it. There's interesting effects on rats, but specifically a rabbit study was pretty interesting because they took a look at arthritic rats, rats that had arthritis. And in this study, they found that the splenopectin helped their arthritis pretty dramatically. And it ended up reducing the pain and inflammation associated with it while also reducing the degradation of the cartilage. So a lot of times with arthritis, it's gonna be the inflammation that eventually can cause an issue with the cartilage and cause that degradation. And the other interesting thing is there's also preliminary research that's showing it can decrease the amount of antibodies that can harm the body. So in this case, we're talking about autoimmune type stuff. And in the case of arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, very clear autoimmune things. So there could be a down regulation there that's allowing this to happen. Again, doesn't mean if you eat spleen, this is magically going to happen. But the fact that we are doing research in this category tells us that there's something there. Okay, we have to be looking forward with the research. Okay, if we only look at what is absolutely proven, we never grow. To put it how my friend put it, it's like saying that a 2010 GMC Denali is the best vehicle ever made because it was made, and that's that. But you can't actually think about the fact that maybe a 2025 is gonna be even cooler because it doesn't exist. Just because it doesn't exist yet doesn't mean that you're not working towards it being cooler, right? So the same thing with research. We have observational, what's concrete, what we know, and then we have what's preliminary and what we can start getting excited about. We just cannot state it as fact. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel 
And don't just be a liver king, be a spleen and heart king too. See you tomorrow.